Hey guys, welcome to episode number 550. Today is Monday, so it's update Monday, and today we're gonna continue to work on the 1,000 gallon pond behind us. We've got a lot of plumbing to do. We want to hook up the pump. We wanna hook up all of the plumbing. That may not all happen though, because it is about to downpour. So let's take a quick spin around the yard and see what we've been up to. And uh, we've also got some new fish in the fish room. So once it starts to rain, we'll head inside and I'll show you what I got this weekend at the Tropical Fish Society of Rhode Island's Fall Auction. So come along with me and learn how to be a better aquarist. All right, so first and foremost, we have our 1,000 gallon tank that's been in the ground and full of water for about a week now. And as we look into it, we can see that we've got quite a few leaves and debris that's on the surface and also on the bottom of this pond. Now, there's no filtration, it's just standing water, so this is what it's gonna look like. Uh, I definitely need to pick up a net, uh, some sort of pond net, uh, in order to scoop up some of that stuff off the bottom. Uh, I'm also planning on building a shop vac air wand to see if I can stick something all the way down to the bottom there to suck up some of the sand and other fine debris. So that will be a project for maybe this afternoon or maybe next week. We'll see. Uh, but I do want to get this cleaned up uh, before we get the, the fish moved out. The biggest thing though is getting all of our uh, plumbing run to make sure that we've got water flowing uh, to and from this tank. Now we've got the pump in and this is one of those things where you need to get the pump before you can get the tubing, before you can hook up all of the other plumbing. <laughs> and it's, it's uh, you know, like a one, one step at a time sort of thing. So uh, I got this pump. This is a Danner Proline pump. It's a high drive type model pump. And this is the exact same model that is running my fish room. And I've had really good success with it. It's been going in my fish room for five years. Uh, without any issues, so I decided to pick up another one. This I believe is the 2100 model and uh, it's got a really good head height to it. We're going about seven feet up in head height, so I believe this one is rated for around 1600 gallons at that head height. I'm not exactly sure, but this is what we've got. Uh, we decided to go with this corrugated pond tubing because I want to be able to sort of uh, flex this tubing um, over this lip and then flex it through the ground and then up into the greenhouse. This type of tubing uh, is all right under low pressure, not really great under high pressure, and uh, this stuff I leaks um, you know quite quite a bit easier than some of your other tubing. So, uh, you know, it's, it's okay to use outdoors. I would never use this kind of tubing uh, indoors. So we'll see how it does. It's uh, the most cost effective option. It doesn't always mean it's the best option. Um, so uh, we've got that, we've got the pump, we've got the tank here. Let's go look at what we decided to do with the electrical. So that pump is a AC pump, which means we need power from the house. Uh, I listened to your guys' comments on the last video. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go AC or DC power for that pump. Uh, DC would have been a huge expense in terms of battery and solar. We may do that at some time, but not right now. So for now, what we do have is an electrical box running from the house and a extension cord as a temporary solution to get that power into the greenhouse. Now, I had to upgrade this electrical box uh, this past week because this is what was here uh, on the wall. And it works fine if you're just like, you know, outside for the day, but this is not something that can stay open uh, overnight or for long periods of time. Uh, it's just, it's not protected. So, um, in addition to that, we had just a standard outlet. And so this was the first thing I wanted to upgrade. 
and uh, so what we did was we installed like a, an all weather type box uh, which has this weatherproof plastic cover to it uh, you run your wires down the bottom and it can rain it can snow whatever as long as this is closed uh, your wires here are protected and in addition to that we got the GFCI model here so if there's any uh, anything that would trip um, you know out on the other end of this electrical cable or even in this box uh, this GFCI is going to pop before the uh, the circuit in the house pops. So this was the upgrade we needed in order to temporarily run power to our greenhouse. Now, in the long term, what I'm going to need to do is dig a trench um, underneath this patio and probably run uh, power uh, up around here and then into the house so that I have a basically a trenched wire that leads out to the greenhouse um, to some sort of uh, electrical box or panel in the greenhouse so that I can have uh, more of a long-term solution for my AC power needs but for now we've just got this extension cord running across the patio not the perfect solution but for the short term it will get us up and running and uh, then we'll get the uh, the permanent electrical installed so as we move into the greenhouse it's a work zone now uh, we've got a lot of the plumbing parts we need to run our return line and our drain lines we're just missing a few components which we're gonna pick up today and then we're gonna start working on stuff in here um, throughout the day as the rain will allow um, obviously working indoors is fine some of the outdoor work may need to wait but uh, we've got some new plants in here uh, my ever-growing collection I did manage to go to the Tropical Fish Society of Rhode Island's auction this past weekend and uh, we'll show some clips of that later on in the video but we did get some uh, I believe this was called like a small water lettuce like a micro water lettuce or something like that it's a smaller variety this is the big stuff uh, this is the small stuff apparently uh, it does look the same it has sort of the little uh, like variegated uh, not variegated but like the, the stripy patterns on the leaves same as over here just a lot smaller we'll see how big this stuff grows but uh, it's always interesting to try to collect some new things and then this I thought was also interesting it is a little different I don't know I think it was labeled as like a, a water lettuce or something like that but uh, it's it's certainly different um, you know maybe it's just smaller and as it grows a little bit bigger it'll look like this but regardless um, I'm pretty satisfied with the number of types of floating plants I now have in my collection out here and the real question is which ones am I gonna leave out here to see if they will survive the winter which ones I will bring inside to see if they will survive my care uh, indoors throughout the winter um, and I guess we'll see you know which ones I decide to to keep out here more long term but those will be interesting um, interesting times so we'll see on that as we look down here you can see I've got my electrical cable or my uh, extension cord temporarily dug underneath the side of the greenhouse and then I've got it just running up over here so that when we do get the pump installed uh, it's relatively nearby again temporary solution we've got all of our PVC pipe and all of our fittings and accessories ready to go uh, essentially here's the plan I want to run my return line it's a one inch uh, PVC pipe along the top edge on the back of all of these tubs and have that spilling water into each one of these tubs and I'll do that with a ball valve so I can control the amount of water going into each one of these tanks however the pump is one inch the tubing is one inch the PVC is one inch um, and the holes here that were pre-drilled in the Laguna tubs are only half inch as we discovered um, in last week's video so um, do the math that's not going to drain fast enough even if I have the ball valve half shut 
uh, that's not going to drain fast enough. If you're wondering about plumbing and the flow rates of water under pressure uh, through PVC pipe and under gravity, um, there's online calculators for that stuff. Just type in like PVC flow calculator, things like that. You'll find how much water can flow through uh, systems like this and um, just make sure that you've got plenty of uh, extra capacity to make sure that when everything turns on these things don't just instantly flood because they can't drain fast enough. So uh, what I'm going to need to do is enlarge these holes with a hole saw, get one inch bulkheads installed and then I'm going to have a two inch drain line running underneath these tanks all the way to the end. And so the hope is that with a one inch ball valve that's, um, you know, halfway to three quarters of the way shut uh, and a one inch return line divided by six tanks, that one inch um, basically of, of water that's flowing through that PVC pipe is going to go through six tubs and six one inch drain lines to a two inch uh, central drain and that is going to exit over here onto the floor. Now I have this space. Um, one component that I still need to pick up is going to go on the floor here. And I want it to be sort of like a mini pond filter. Uh, I believe what I'm gonna do is use a five gallon bucket followed by probably like a, a long style mop bucket. Um, and I'll connect those two and it will allow me to hopefully do a little bit of a swirl filter and then a, uh, a an area where I can stick a bunch of Matala mat sheets to catch a lot of the heavy debris before that two inch drain line goes underground and then out back to the tub. So that's a lot to accomplish. Uh, we're going to start on that throughout the day here. Um, and we will certainly check up on the completion of that uh, in following videos. But it is about to downpour outside. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to all of the outdoor projects today. So let's head inside and I will show you all of the fish that I got at this year's fall auction for the Tropical Fish Society of Rhode Island. I'm super excited about the plants that I picked up here. We've also got some really cool fish and we haven't been in the fish room all summer. So let's go inside, check out what I got and what's going on indoors. All right guys, and as soon as I got indoors, of course it started to rain outside. So it looks like the majority of the day is gonna be spent down here in the fish room, which is okay because I've been neglecting it lately and it certainly needs some love. So we'll take a break from the pond today and uh, we'll spend some time indoors. So this tank is absolutely filthy. As you can see, the gravel uh, and the sand definitely needs to be cleaned. I have a plan for this and it's the same plan for the pond outside. So we'll take a look at that in a second. But um, over here we have a cool little spray bottle, pump spray bottle. Um, one thing I noticed is that the turtles haven't been spending a whole lot of time up here. They haven't done any digging. I'm not 100% sure if they're ready to uh, start laying eggs or not, but I figured if I spray down the substrate every few days just to give it a little bit of moisture, uh, maybe that will encourage them to uh, dig around a little bit more. Uh, I haven't seen them drop any eggs in the water or anything, so there's no need to be concerned quite yet. But um, with this basking light, uh, this area does get pretty hot and this substrate does dry out. So I thought this was a pretty cool little device just to keep that a little moist. So we've got that going on. Otherwise, this tank has been doing pretty good. Uh, I got the goldfish out of here a while ago. I put some angelfish in here that were being rehomed. Uh, those have since gone to Mike's house, so go check out Mass Aquariums if you want to see those angelfish. Uh, while all of that was going on, the angler population in this tank took a big hit. You can see there are a few swimming around here and there, 
but uh, not nearly as many as there used to be. So I might throw some plastic plants back in here, throw some more endlers in here, and see if that population can uh, rebound. Uh, people have been asking about the hermit crabs, or sorry, the fiddler crabs, and they're doing pretty good. They're still in this stock tank, the 50-gallon uh, stock tank down here on the ground. Uh, what I did decide to do was add a sponge filter. I just sort of tipped it on its side, so we could get some filtration going on in here. But as you can see, they're just as happy to be underwater as they are to be on the land side. So they got plenty of space to roam around here. And uh, this has been working out really good. Um, it's amazing that they can't climb up this wall. They can get up to here, but they can't climb up the rest. So they've been doing really well in this tank. And uh, they're always exciting to watch because they're always moving around. They're always looking for food. And uh, they're always flexing that big claw. So uh, very, very cool little critters, the fiddler crabs. So if you guys have never had fiddler crabs, it's, it's definitely worth trying out. Especially in a species only tank like this. Anyways, so those are good. Moving on to the aquariums, um, we have some new fish. So, as I said, I did go to the Tropical Fish Society of Rhode Island's auction yesterday on Sunday. And we got quite a few new fish, so we'll walk through uh, all the new fish and all the old fish. The first new fish in here are some albino quarries. We've got, I believe, uh, six or seven of them in there, and they are really big. They are definitely full size, and uh, they're having a good time in here. We've also got the Mexican mollies, which I picked up, I believe, a year ago at an auction. Uh, they're still doing well. Uh, it's a small colony in here of the Mexican mollies. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, if I should be separating the young or um, if they just need more salt in the water or, or what but um, they haven't been sort of exploding in population size. Uh, I have put some java moss in here and it has started to attach to the plastic plant so that may help give them some more cover. Uh, but those guys are doing really well. This tank is really hard to keep clean. As you can see, there's like this pile of mulm on the ground. It's like that every single morning. And uh, a lot of that's just because the moss is growing and dying. Again, I'm not really good at keeping plants alive in these tanks. Uh, I am using a used marine land light here to um, keep that moss alive and that's working out okay. Um, up here, we have a very cool fish. This is the Amica Splendens. And I've got a small group of these. I believe it's 10 fish total. And uh, I believe it's five males and five females. And these are a live bear. I picked them up at the auction. And so I'm really excited to see if these guys are able to thrive. Um, supposedly they do well in hard water. We've certainly got hard water here. So uh, I'm hoping they work out really well and I get a ton of fry from these guys. Supposedly, when they drop their fry, they do not eat them. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, and that will certainly help out with the uh, population size of those guys. So these guys are in a tank all by themselves. We've got the endlers over here and yeah, I gotta clean this tank too. It's been a busy weekend with the auction and everything else going on, so I haven't gotten around to that. These guys are doing very well. It's a 40 gallon colony, and uh, they're always growing. They're always multiplying. If you get a couple endlers, uh, you'll have an endless supply of fish, so um, nothing to complain about down there. And uh, here we have, maybe difficult to see, we picked up a bunch of Ancestress from the auction. And let's see if I can get them to come out. If I move this log, I think I got 40 of them. And they're all that size. So they're all pretty small. But there is a boatload of them in there. So I'm gonna feed these guys uh, a lot of uh, veggies. Uh, I've got 
I think yesterday I fed them um, beans, uh, green beans, and today I'm going to feed them uh, cucumbers. So we'll keep feeding them heavily and uh, hopefully they grow and then I can start uh, putting them in all of my tanks down here in the basement. So that's this side of the rack. Of course the glass needs to be clean as always. As we move over to the other side, we've got a lot of crayfish going on. We've got the dwarf orange CPO crayfish in this tank. I picked these up uh, about a month ago. Um, I haven't noticed any babies or any buried females with eggs yet. Uh, I'm kind of curious how small those are going to be uh, when it does happen, if it does happen. Uh, I'm hoping to get some young from these at some point, but they're in a tank all by themselves here. I believe there's about a dozen in there, maybe a few less. Um, they're just so small. This is the, the their adult size. They're so small that it's uh, it's tough to keep them with much of anything else. They got to be really docile fish that you put them with because uh, they are just so tiny. So they're doing okay in there. I would like to see some some fry in there, uh, some baby crayfish. This is my marbled crayfish tank, the marmo crib, the self cloning crayfish and these guys always do well uh, I've always got a tank full of these guys and they're always reproducing so um, there's probably a few buried females in here right now I don't see any right now they're probably hiding but yeah I probably got about two dozen maybe three dozen of them in here of various sizes so those are doing well and I've got what I believe is Pete Clarkey in here. These are the um, Louisiana crayfish uh, that I got a few years ago. I saved from the crawfish boil. These things uh, reproduce and grow like crazy. They get really big, as you can see that big guy back there. And uh, they're always reproducing. They're always crazy. So there's at least a few dozen in here. And uh, if I devoted more tanks to them, there would be twice as many, if not more. So um, they're doing pretty well. Give them a lot of hiding places, give them a lot of food, and, uh, and they'll grow. So that's that tank. And then down here, we have our pioneers. We have our feeder goldfish colony. These guys I bought, uh, I believe last year when um, I was setting up my uh, chop and flip aquaponics barrel system, the 55 gallon barrel system. They were very tiny when I purchased them. And obviously, as you can see, they've grown here over the course of uh, the summer outdoors last summer, and now uh, basically the entire winter and the entire summer indoors. Um, goldfish are cool. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I, I haven't really kept them but um, you know, the, and these guys are nothing special, but they are a serious contender for long-term residence uh, in the thousand gallon pond outside. Uh, these guys are going in sometime this week because I want to get them in and I want to get them acclimated to the cooler temperatures. I want to see if they can survive the, uh, the winter uh, outdoors. This guy right here has one eyeball, the white one. It's it's bizarre, I mean, but but he uh, he swims around and eats food just as good as the rest of them. But yeah, these guys are certainly all a bunch of misfits, all a bunch of culls. Uh, they were feeder goldfish at one time, but they've been doing well. And if you see the two in the back, I'm not 100% sure if those are goldfish or koi. Uh, we do have these, what appear to be large goldfish or some sort of koi hybrid. I got those from Gary's Pond. Uh, they were babies a few years ago and I got those from Gary's Pond, those two silver ones in the back. And somehow they managed to um, have babies in here. And those are the two that survived. So, kind of crazy, but um, 
yeah, I guess even in a 40 gallon tank, goldfish can breed even without even trying. So kind of bizarre, but um, there you go. Goldfish will find a way, certainly. Um, so these guys are gonna be moving outside very shortly. And if they survive the winter, then um, next spring I will be purchasing some fancier or maybe some rarer goldfish or koi or something else to put out there in the thousand gallon pond. But these guys are the first guys to go in. So hopefully they enjoy it and hopefully they grow like crazy while they're in there. So that's a quick look at all of the tank and some of the new fish that we picked up at the auction. Um, as I was talking about earlier, I went out and bought a mop bucket. Um, so outside in the greenhouse, we need to build a filter. Uh, we need to build some sort of mechanical filter. I'm not as concerned about the biologic filtration capacity of it, but I do need something which uh, functions very well as a mechanical filter. And as you saw at the end of that row, I've got a very narrow strip of ground uh, towards the wall of the greenhouse and I needed to build some sort of filter. Now, uh, koi ponds and goldfish ponds, if you look online, there is a fancy and sort of expensive filter which sort of has a round area and then it has a long area to it. And so this is sort of a, the beginnings of a DIY version of that. Um, usually the first chamber is a swirl filter. So your, your water sort of comes in low and is able to swirl around and all the heavy solids stay in this container. And then you got another bulkhead which goes out and spills into a longer chamber which has a whole bunch of uh, Matala matte sheets all in a row uh, going from coarse all the way to fine and that captures a lot of the, the particles that get through the swirl filter. So I don't know if I'm going to do it exactly the same way. I might dump my two inch um, drain line directly into this bucket and then allow it to um, go through some sort of media and then spill into this bucket and then I certainly will do as much Batala as I can. Here's an example of what that looks like. Uh, I need to get some big sheets of this. All I have left are some scraps, but uh, all of those will be going in a row and then I'll have my bulkhead coming out the other end. That will go underground, out the greenhouse, and back into the pond. So, we gotta get a few fittings to put all this together, but uh, this is a very heavy duty mop bucket, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, we got a five gallon bucket and then a six gallon mop bucket. So, I think that'll do fine. Uh, if I need more filtration down the line, I can certainly upgrade it, but I think this will certainly get us started. So, dirty tanks. We got the thousand gallon outside with sand on the bottom. We've got our 300 gallon stock tank with the turtles behind us, also dirty. Um, I wanted to figure out a way, a cheap and easy way to make a airlift vac wand for ponds. Uh, I've done this in the past on a smaller scale for aquariums and I wanted to uh, basically just up the scale of this thing. So we've got our shop vac on the floor. Um, I mean, most of the time when you use a shop vac, you're sucking stuff up into the vacuum itself, but you can switch the hose so that um, the, the nozzle is actually blowing air. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use the side that blows the air. And we got a bunch of pieces here to build a vac wand. This is something I love to do. I just like stand around in the aisles of Home Depot or Lowe's for like a half an hour, um, just trying to figure out how parts go together and how ideas can take shape. And this was a super simple and super low cost way of doing this. I'm gonna put this together and we're gonna see if it works. But here are the pieces. So first up we have it's basically like a three pack of connectors of various sizes so you can attach different size hoses together. We don't need the big one, all we need are the two smaller ones. Um, and the smallest one, funny enough, a uh, half inch PVC straight 
adapter fits really snugly right into that. So once we have that, we can connect these two together and then we can connect a half inch PVC pipe into that and then we can connect a one and a half inch T into this onto a one and a half inch pipe and then use our drain sleeve that we've shown in past videos connect it there and all of a sudden when we start blowing air down that half inch PVC it's going to start coming back up this one and a half inch PVC and it's going to draw all of the leaves and all of the sand and other debris all the way up to the top we made sure that the length of this thing is the same length uh, or the same height I should say as the water uh, in the pool this is a small version this is sized to work with the 300 gallon stock tank so I'm gonna put this together and um, once I do we can come back and see if it works but while I'm building this let's go look at the footage that I got from the Tropical Fish Society of Rhode Island's auction where I got all of these cool new fish so let's go check that out Alright guys, we've got this super duper vac wand put together. Uh, it didn't even require any uh, glue at all. All of these are pressure fit pieces. So I can take this apart and if I'm happy with it, um, I can make one sized for the thousand gallon pond outside and then uh, I can glue it all together uh, at that point. So for now, we've got this wand. It's sized 
to go into this 300 gallon stock tank and as you can see the important part is that that half inch pipe ends about here which means hopefully all of that air that's getting blown through here is going to travel back up this one and a half inch pipe and then because this is sized so that the T exits right here at the water height uh, all of that debris should end up in this sock so well, let's give this a try see how it works important to note you need to keep the power cord as far away from the water as possible uh, it's also on the GFCI so if anything were to happen uh, that will trip so uh, always keep power in mind and safety in mind when using it um, in new ways so I'm gonna turn the vacuum on we're gonna see how this works we got a GoPro in the water so we can see if it works or not so let's try it out room fails 101 right here <laughs> this vacuum is way way too powerful it's producing way too much air <laughs> for this stock tank um, that may change when we bring it outside because we're gonna go a lot deeper and so it's got to push a lot harder to get the air out uh, four feet down versus this which is only two feet down but uh, I think we're gonna cut this experiment short here uh, in the stock tank because it's just way too powerful so in the meantime I will clean this tank the old-fashioned way with a little elbow grease and we're gonna call it a day alright guys and that's gonna do it for us for today we had a rainy day and unfortunately we're not able to get to all of the outdoor projects involved with the pond but i hope you really enjoyed the footage from the tropical fish society of rhode island's auction and the update in the fish room i know we haven't been down here in a while it's been really nice outside for so many months but now that it's starting to cool off we're going to spend a lot more time indoors we also have to get that pond straightened out and operational so hope you guys enjoyed Stay tuned for next week's video when we definitely 100% move those goldfish outdoors into that pond and all of the plumbing will hopefully be set up and running. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.